Well, greetings, and it is good to be with you on day 28 as we go through our 40 Days in the Word uh, devotions and uh, all based on the Chosen series. And today our theme word is Presence Part 1. Presence Part 1, where one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, the disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? In the, the story video, they're going through the fields, and they're taking the, the grain and then rubbing it to get all of the chaff off and then eating it. It's a, just a fascinating... Um, depiction. I've read this so many times, but to see them rubbing it to get at the grain that's in there was just fascinating to see. So here's the, here's the devotion, Law 101. It's actually not unlawful to pluck a head of grain on the Sabbath. God commanded that his people rest every seventh day, and Moses specified that no fire be lit in its observance so that the Jews prepared their Shabbat food ahead of time. There was also a ceremonial law that prohibited stuff, all of which fell into three main categories. No food preparation, no making clothes of or leather, and no building things, but no plucking actually wasn't on the list. Leave it to the religious leaders of the time to require more than the, of the people than God did at the expense of the law's purpose. God wanted the Jews to rest because they spent their days doing physical labor and the work was never done, for goodness sakes. My first church was a small rural Wisconsin farming community and the farmers were busy. There was always something to do. Same with the people in Jesus' time. There was always something to do to, uh, to work in the fields, to do a little more plowing, whatever it might be. Always more work to do. Work was never done, for goodness sakes, they walked in the desert for 40 years, pulling their homes behind them. So the required rest wasn't for God's sake, but for theirs, just as parents force exhausted little ones to take naps. Well, back to the story. Jesus said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence? which it is not lawful for anyone but the priest to eat. He also gave it to those who were with him. Didn't you, didn't you read that about how David did that? History 101. In the Old Testament times, a house of God known as a tabernacle where God was thought to reside was a place where God dwelled in the form of a cloud or a pillar of fire. Besides his presence, there were only a few other things in the tents to room because uh, the tabernacle was where they kept the Ark of the Covenant. Remember when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, they put that in the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant, a very elaborate box with gold tops. If you watch Indiana and the Temple of Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, you, Doom, you saw that Ark of the Covenant. So, back to the devotion. First, it held a golden lampstand made of solid gold and weighing 75 pounds, had six arms, kind of like a candelabra or menorah, with many lamps that burned continuously as the only source of light. Next, on the altar of incense made from Achaia wood, which is the wood that Noah built the ark from, covered with gold and standing three feet high, it was a special concoction that was burned twice a day. Finally, a small ornate table, also made from Acadia wood, acacia wood, and covered with gold, and it sat opposite the lampstand. On it, the priest put 12 loaves of bread, um, kind of like flat bread. The loaves were baked fresh and were placed every week, acknowledging God's constant presence with the people of Israel that's why they call it the bread of the presence. All that to say, the daily rituals of lighting the fires and... I got a bee here, sorry about that. <laughs> the daily 
rituals of lighting the fire, burning incense, and baking bread were done to honor God's presence because God was in the room. Stick a pin on that. Despite God's great favor toward David and his resulting victories on the battlefield, David was actually quite a piece of work. He often let physical urges dictate his behavior, and this particular incident was no different. David was King Saul on King Saul's most wanted list, and he was tired, hungry, and on a run, so he racked up three violations. Number one, David entered the house of God, a place where only priests were allowed to go. Number two, David lied to the priest, telling him that he was on a secret mission from Saul the king. Nope, he wasn't. And number three, David all but demanded to eat the bread of the presence, food only the priests were allowed to eat. Ironically, the rule-obsessed Pharisees held David in the highest possible regard. But this new guy, Jesus, and his disciples, with their heads of grain plucking, how dare they? As they would become, as would become his habit, Jesus exposed the hypocrisy of their disgust and redirected the conversation to something far more disturbing. To be continued, we'll take that up in day 29. So, one of the things that that story shows us is the value of um, relationship over rules we have to follow. The church sometimes is perceived as one with all these rules. Well, kind of, but really the main thing that church and faith are about is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Let's close in a word of prayer and just say, dear loving God, sometimes Sometimes we focus on the wrong things. Sometimes we turn from you, but you always welcome us back. Your mercy and your love gives us confidence. Thank you for the invitation to share in your love for us and for the world so that you can form new hearts within us. God bless us with your presence this day and every day. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I look forward to being with you tomorrow. You take care today. Bye-bye.